Welcome to St Paul's Church Norton Lees in Sheffield in England. My name is Murray Brown. Uh, can I welcome you to our carol service uh, 2021? It's a bit of a cold and damp and miserable December day here, but I'm going to be joined by my colleagues Beth Langner and Mike Warren in leading through this carol service. And thanks again to Andy and David and Jill for much of our music. So I hope that you can join in uh, with us in finding the light and the joy of Jesus again this year. Counselor, 
mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. We have been walking through some dark times in the last few years. There has been some light in the darkness, the success of the vaccines and now a tablet to, to help fight off COVID. But they have been too late for far too many. We've become used to being told that our hospitals are at breaking point. So we long for something comforting and familiar. We long for some sense of normality, even if we have to make do with a new normal. Our prayer is that these carols, which you can join in with at home, and this carol service will bring you joy, inspiration and a sense of connection. Connect, connection with others and connection with God. expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, 
an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. So we've had to face dilemmas in these last years that we wouldn't have dreamed of. Choices about keeping ourselves safe and keeping those who we love safe. Choices about whether to wear a mask, when to wear a mask, whether to have a vaccine or how often to take a test and thinking whether a little sniffle might actually be COVID. Perhaps we wish that an angel would tell us what to do, but remember, that Joseph had come up with a solution before he was urged to take that step further. We can only think of our best choices, trying not to be ruled by fear, but thinking of others as well as ourselves.
In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. Mary found herself giving birth a long way from home, in circumstances which were far from ideal. But space was found, and she gladly accepted the kindness of strangers. Have you found yourself accepting kindness in unexpected places? It can be a humbling and almost disturbing experience. It challenges our expectations and opens us up to seeing things in new ways. What have you learned from the experiences you've had? Might God have been using them to broaden your horizons and see that God might be at work in ways you may not expect? Light a candle in the darkness Light a candle in the night Let the love of Jesus light us Light a candle in the night Like a flicker in the darkness Comes a mother's desperate cry then a baby's voice in answer Brings the coming of the light Light a candle in the darkness Light a candle in the night Let the love of Jesus light us Light a candle in the night he did not come in wealth and grandeur He did not stand with men of power He had no status to commend him He was homeless, he was poor Light a candle in the darkness Light a candle in the night Let the love of Jesus light us Light a candle in the night But he came to heal the wounded And he came to heal the scars Of a world that's bruised and broken Where the image has been marred Light a candle in the darkness Light a candle in the night Let the love of Jesus light us Light a candle in the night Light a candle in the darkness Light a candle in the night Love of Jesus light us, light a candle in the night, light a candle in the darkness, light a candle in the night, let the love of Jesus light us, light a candle in the Light 
And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. That night, a trek into Bethlehem would have been far from the minds of the shepherds, keeping watch over the sheep on the hills. But I think that they were glad that they went. It would have been a mind-blowing experience and one they would never forget. Have you ever been surprised and even shocked by a recent experience? Was it a good or a bad surprise? And what did you learn from it? What would you do different if it happened again?
Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. Later, Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. With gladness, men of old did the guiding star behold. As with joy they hailed its light, leading onward, beaming bright. So most gracious God, may we. Surely this must be the place where the new baby will be born. 
How much were they able to pick up on the shock and disquiet that their arrival caused? We don't know. And it turned out that they were not far from their destination, but their expectations were challenged and they had to set their sights on a different destination. How do you feel when your assumptions are challenged? How graciously can you accept any corrections? Being able to take on new information and perspectives is vital to life and growth, but it's never easy. A prayer. Loving God, help us to be ready to find and experience your transforming love this Christmas so that we can make this world a better place. Most people, it seems, uh, love a quiz. And the Christmas story has a few cryptic questions for people to work out along the way. Let's start with the shepherds here. They uh, had to recover from the shock of seeing an angel on the hillside. And they were told that the Saviour and Messiah had been born in David's town. Not a particularly hard question for them to work out, but they had to get the right answer in order to get to the right place. And they did. They found the baby, uh, as they were told, wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. But the question had a purpose. This Messiah, this anointed and appointed saviour was to be another like David. David who was the epitome of a leader who turned fortunes around. Like David but different. Saving but by different means and for a different purpose. Offering wholesome change not just to Israel, but to the whole world, to bring a new way of life, living in connection with God. The wise men had the longest journey, and all they had to go on was their knowledge of the night sky and the appearance of a particular star it seems a huge risk to me for them to have travelled hundreds of miles uh, on a camel or whatever. Um, it, it feels a bit flimsy evidence to be going on. And when they arrived in the city where they expected to find the child, the capital city, they needed further directions from Herod, a highly dubious king, but he provided the clue they needed to find out where to go. And these wise men were considered pagan foreigners, but I think they showed greater faith in a way than the homegrown shepherds. They certainly had further to go. Joseph was set a moral dilemma when he found that Mary was going to have a child which was not his. How he reacted could have caused her summary execution. And even when he chose to do the best that he felt he could, by quietly uh, ending his betrothal without fuss, an angel had other ideas. He was urged to marry Mary and adopt the child as his own. But the greatest conundrum of all in the whole story was where the baby would be born. Mary and Joseph would have assumed that the baby would have been born at their home in, in Nazareth. A humble home, we guess, but familiar and amongst close relatives and friends. 
news of the census would have come as a, a terrible shock, a terrible blow, and involved them in this long journey, 60 miles, to Joseph's hometown of Bethlehem, as well as the extra taxation the, the census would have demanded. And knowing the town was crowded, would be crowded, they wouldn't have known where they were going to stay. It would have to be wherever they could find. We are told that there, is, there was no guest room available for them to stay in. They probably had, well, they had to make uh, space amongst animals and probably in the family room of some distant relative with the family squashed at one end, the animals at the other, and Joseph and Mary giving birth somewhere in the middle. It would have been awkward, embarrassing, difficult, and emotionally draining. But this is how Jesus, the anointed saviour for all people, came into our world, opening up for us a different way of living a different perspective, different values, different priorities. By embracing life as it was, in all its difficulty and oppression and challenge. If Jesus uh, came to show us what God is like, if he came to demonstrate uh, that God is love, then Jesus has enabled us to grasp that we are loved by God, whatever our circumstances, whatever our situation. There is nowhere that God will not go. There are no exceptions. We are all loved for who we are and for what we are. This love is made real in our experience as we allow ourselves the space to be loved and to know that we are loved. And that enables us to reach out in love to others, little by little, making the world a better place. So if Jesus was born into our world to demonstrate love, to show what love in action looks like, this love will be difficult and demanding. As the shepherds found, the new life of Jesus has an ancient lineage as well as a, a new twist. The story of the wise men shows how all embracing that love is. It's, it reaches those called foreigner and pagan. It even touched a murderous despot. And this love is made real amongst those who are poor and oppressed and illiterate. So the quiz question for us, the conundrum that you might like to ponder, the question is, how might you be being drawn into an experience of God's love this Christmas? Is it more likely to be amongst the well-to-do or the ordinary people, even the poor and oppressed? Is it going to be something completely new or something with a, an ancient lineage? Is it going to be found by sticking with the people we know well or by reaching out to those who are different to us? And if so, how and where? Only you will know the answer to that, those questions. For the coming of Jesus has raised our expectations of finding the love of God. 
Jesus wants us to be on the lookout for this love, wherever we go, even in unexpected places and in unexpected ways, in unexpected people and in unexpected lives. But most of all, the coming of Jesus has raised the priority for all of us for all people, of love in action. May we discover this love and more of this love this Christmas so that we may pass it on to others. Amen. those who have loved us and nurtured us, loved us into life. And with our second candle, let's pray for those we know who will struggle this Christmas. Perhaps family or friends, Perhaps those we know through work or through volunteering that we do, our neighbours, we hold them before God so that they may sense his love and care 
even in their difficulty. With our third candle, we pray for those who feel unwanted and rejected because of their origin or background, sexuality, faith or choices in life. Perhaps thinking of those we know personally and holding them before God. And with our fourth and final candle, let's be open to God's love touching and inspiring us now. And we allow God's Spirit to bring into our minds people we might reach out to this Christmas. Now we join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> the world the Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature and sing. And nature and sing. And nature sing. And and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Saviour reigns. Your sweetest songs employ. While fields and streams and hills and plains repeat the sound in joy. Repeat the sound in joy. Repeat, repeat the sound in joy. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness the wonders of the his wonders love, of the his wonders love, of his love the wonders of the wonders of his love thank you for joining us with this online carol service. We close with a blessing. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the infant Christ be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>